180 outfits in one bag? Antonio, what type of sorcery is this? Now, gents, I'm no witcher, but I understand multiplication and the power of the interchangeable wardrobe. Let me explain. When I pack three jackets, three pairs of shoes, four pairs of trousers, five shirts, assuming 100% interchangeability, 15 pieces of clothing equal 180 outfits. I'm sharing with you the five rules of interchangeability and how I apply this to my closet so that you can have an amazing travel wardrobe. Rule number one with wardrobe interchangeability, choose a style genre and stick with it. Street style, classic style, casual style, find what works for you. The key of the interchangeable wardrobe is you want as many things to work, as many of your jackets to work with your trousers, as many of your shirts to work with your shoes. All of this should go together and if you start mixing up the genres, it's much more difficult for things to match. Rule number two, keep it simple. So when it comes to color, go for the classic colors. When it comes to the items, choose the staples, the items that have been around for decades. Why? Because again, you want everything to work with everything else. When it comes to colors, black, blue, white, gray, brown, great colors to start your foundation with. When it comes to the staple items, you want to choose shoes, yes, that have been around the style. We've seen it many times. Point being is you're going with something that's going to work with everything else in your wardrobe. Rule number three, choose color themes for the various parts of your wardrobe. So when it comes to shoes, instead of going for a brown and a black, instead stick with brown and go with variations of that brown. And by sticking with that, all of a sudden, guess what? You don't really have to change up the belt. For me, when it comes to jackets, I love blues and greens. When it comes to my trousers, I'm going to go with tans, variations of brown and grays. When it comes to my shirts, blues and whites. By choosing themes, what happens here is all of a sudden you're able to make it so it's much easier to match things. Rule number four, leverage texture and pattern to go back and break rule number three. Now, rule number three is there so that you don't look too matchy-matchy, but I understand some of you guys want to wear a blue jacket with blue jeans and you think the combination looks great. I agree. And it looks great because we see a difference in texture. With those blue jeans, that denim, it has a very different texture than that jacket that maybe is made from wool, has maybe a speckled pattern to it. You Use pattern, use texture to change it up and to be able to wear combinations which, uh, yeah, don't look too matchy-matchy. Rule number five, for your big ticket items, jackets and shoes, you want to own less but spend more, go for better quality. And for your other items like shirts and even your trousers, you can own more of these, have fun and experiment. Now, gents, as I'm packing this bag, I want to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Carl Friedrich. I've talked about this company before because they are making some of the most beautiful handcrafted leather and travel products out there. Elegant aesthetics, premium materials, excellent craftsmanship. Guys, I've seen a lot of expensive bags. I've looked at a lot of expensive gear and I would have to say that Carl Friedrich is the best value out there. If you want luxury at an affordable price, Carl Friedrich is where it's at. So this carry-on is a polycarbonate hard shell suitcase made to stand up to the test of time. It features a lightly textured finish with Italian leather detailing. The zipperless construction ensures quick access and it avoids the most common breaking points. It's using a polycarbonate shell with a rigid aluminum frame and it has two TSA approved locks. And little things like the wheels, they use a Japanese source manufacturer that makes some of the best wheels on the planet. So whenever you're walking through the airport, it's going to glide seamlessly. And if you decide to give this as a gift or gift it to yourself, you can personalize the bag as well with your initials. And it's also got the option for an integrated power bank. Go get this bag, guys. I'm linking to it down in the description with the best deal you're going to find out there. Use this link to get the best deal. And if you're looking for a good looking weekender bag, if you want a great looking briefcase, I've reviewed their products before. I truly believe they are some of the best products out there. An amazing company. I'm proud to support them. All right, Jen, so now I'm going to walk through my travel interchangeable wardrobe. And I'm going to talk about each of the items, why I choose them, what kind of my logic is here. So I'm a classic style type of guy. I wear a lot of sports jackets. I also occasionally wear suits, but really sports jackets for me are where it's at. I think that they're more interchangeable simply because any jacket can go with any trouser. This jacket right here, I absolutely love. And I love it because it is so easy to match. Now, when you zoom in on this jacket, what you're going to notice is the pattern. And that's something you should look for. Look at the variation in color. We've got black. We've got variations of blue. What this does, it makes it very easy to match with any of the shirts, any variation of blue, or even a dark navy, black, 
whatever color shirt I want to go with is pretty much going to match with this. Next up, we've got this very handsome jacket in a dark green. Now, notice that herringbone pattern. Again, I'm leveraging pattern because most of my trousers are going to be tans. They are going to be grays. This is going to work perfectly. In addition, I don't have any shirts that are green, so I'm not going to have that matchy matchy look. Uh, it's just a color that stands out, especially from the crowd. Now, we've got this gray jacket and I've talked about the power of gray before. Gray is a non-color. It's pretty much going to match anything, but this gray has specks of blue and red and I love seeing things like that in a tweed jacket like this because that means that any red or blue that I wear in my shirts, maybe a dark brown with the trousers or even in my shoes, it's actually going to pull it out and it's going to make it look amazing with that combination. Next up, let's talk about sweaters. So, functionally, it works. It's winter time, but what I love about sweaters is they're a very easy way to give a layering look and add a bit of depth and dimension to your overall image and style. Now, you're going to notice a lot of the colors here are actually replicating the same colors in my sports jackets, but the patterns and the texture is different. And that's why you could wear them together. Now, would I wear this navy zip up with a navy suit or a navy blazer? Probably not. It's going to be a little bit too much navy, but it would work in contrast to the jacket, that blue jacket with the patterns. It would look amazing with that combination. Now, this next sweater, as you can see, is a gray, going to match pretty much any type of shirt or jacket in my wardrobe. But what I really like about this is the V neck. V necks are great because they work with a collared shirt. So you're going to be able to see that collar right up there. It's going to help frame the face. Just a great look overall and one of the more formal type of sweaters out there. And what about having fun? Having a little bit of color in your sweaters. Yes, you can do it. Now, it's going to make the piece a little bit less interchangeable. This is going to be memorable, but it's going to work with all the jackets, all the shirts in my wardrobe. And for that reason, I've got it here. Now, when it comes to trousers, and when I say trousers, I mean pants, jeans, shorts. There are three colors I default to, brown, blue, and gray variations of gray, variations of blue, and variations of brown. A lot of people don't know that khaki and tan all fall under browns. And I stick with these families because they're easy to match all of my jackets and all of my shirts. Now, when it comes to jeans, I've got a wide variety of jeans, but I like a dark jean. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I say this all the time. I just feel it will match. And notice the texture on the jeans. What I love about this, it'll work with any navy blue shirt, any navy blue jacket because the texture is different. Now, when it comes to gray, this can be the most formal of all the colors out there. Again, it's a non-color, going to match pretty much anything in your wardrobe. So, you could wear it with a navy blazer. You could wear it with a casual sports jacket. You could just simply wear this with a nice shirt. And then I've got this lighter gray made in a jean style and I actually love this. Um, yeah, so lighter gray, more casual, darker gray, closer to black, more formal. So, now let's talk shirts. When it comes to interchangeability, formality, versatility, you can't be white. A lot of people think white is a boring color. It's not, guys. There is so much you can do, especially with shirts. You can change up the fabric. Right here, we've got a heavier weight twill weave. But right over here, look at this other shirt right here. Notice I've got that contrasting fabric material right in there. Also on the buttons, I've got contrast here on the buttons. Little things like that set it apart. In addition, this is a very lightweight poplin weave. And the beauty of white is that you can also dress it down. Right here, we've got white in a polo. This is going to be a great looking shirt that, yes, you could wear it with a sports jacket, which I have done with this shirt and still feel comfortable, especially on a hot day. Guys, white is versatile. It really just comes down to your imagination and how you're going to bring this into your wardrobe. Now, we've got blue. Blue, not as formal as white, but more versatile. Why? Because not only do you have the different patterns, you have the different uh, weaves, but you also have variations of the blue, the different shades. So, right here, we've got this light blue and I got to see a little bit of a herringbone weave in on this, but this is a great dress shirt that I could wear with a business suit and a red tie and look amazing. Or if I wanted to go with something more casual, right here, you can see it's a there's a pattern here and it gives us this light blue appearance even though it's two different threads sewn together. Over here, we've got more like a denim feel and it's a little bit of a heavier weight. The, I can tell by the drape, this is a casual shirt here. And then we've got this dark navy. So, this dark navy, one of my favorite shirts, I wear it all the time. And of course, by the darker color, it's going to be more casual, but this solid color makes it very interchangeable. Now, when it comes to polos, as you can tell, dark navy, one of my go to's, but you can also go with a medium blue. Again, versatile, interchangeable, that's what we're looking for. 
So let's talk about patterns and interchangeability. Patterns don't necessarily make a shirt not interchangeable, but they do make it a bit more memorable. But if you're wearing a jacket over that and you only see the collar, you only see the front of the shirt, you only see the cuffs, I think that you could bring in a wide variety of patterns and they're going to work. Beautiful pattern right here. You could wear this with a business uh, suit, a uh, red tie, and it's going to look amazing. Right here, this is going to be a bit more casual because blue is the base color. But again, the stripe is going to keep this relatively you know, formal. You could wear this with business attire. Now, you wouldn't want to wear this with business attire. You could, but it's going to be a bit more casual shirt as we've got that small repeating pattern. Over here, the pattern has gotten larger. So this is going to be more casual, but it's still relatively interchangeable because the pattern isn't one that stands out with a bright color. This pattern is going to be much more casual. Relatively, I'd say this one starts to get a bit more memorable, so maybe not as interchangeable. This right here is not interchangeable. And the reason being is it's a very memorable pattern. Now let's talk about color. So notice the pattern here. It's a bit bold, a bit casual, but there's really not much color in this shirt. So this would actually work, I think, in an interchangeable wardrobe. This color really depends on you. Right here, pink is going to stand out. For many people, it's going to be memorable. But if you wear a lot of pink, I could see actually it could be part of your interchangeable wardrobe because it's a solid shirt. Right here, though, we've got this red, on a white backdrop. This memorable. Now this shirt right here, a very loud pattern. But notice we don't have too much color. We've just got the dark blue with the white right here. We've got a shirt that stands out. I love this shirt. I take it to conferences, but I know it's not interchangeable. I wear it one time because people remember it. And again, it's a great option, but understand interchangeability and something loud like this, they usually don't go together. Now, when it comes to shoe interchangeability, I like it when you choose a particular color. You go with browns or you go with blacks. And I find that this is a personal preference, really depends on your skin tone and what you like. For me, I ended up going with brown. So the vast majority of shoes in my wardrobe are variations of brown. And let's talk about the importance of style when it comes to your footwear interchangeability. So if you've got a closet full of suits, pair of boots like this are going to be too casual. A pair of boots like this though, you'd be able to pull in. Me, I'm able to actually make both of these work in my interchangeable wardrobe. How? Well, I don't really have a whole lot of suits that I wear on a normal basis. I usually go towards the sports jacket and jean look. And jeans are a great transition piece because you can dress them up, you can dress them down. I can wear either pair of boots with my jeans. Another thing to watch out for, bright colors. When it comes to interchangeability of footwear, you can go with the right style, but if you've got a loud color, everyone's going to remember it. Again, if you really like it, go for it, but understand it's not going to be as interchangeable as a classic color in the same style. Now, when it comes to actually having fun with the style, going with something that's a little bit eye-catching, go with the muted colors, and that's when you can actually have a little bit more fun with the styles. Go with something with, if you had gone with contrasting colors, yes, would not be interchangeable changeable, but this right here, yeah, I throw this into the interchangeable wardrobe. Now, moving on from those casual shoes, let's go to something a little bit dressier, but still incredibly comfortable. For me, when I'm traveling, I want something that I can slip on and off my feet. I love myself just a great pair of double monks or a pair of penny loafers. What I love about these, again, I don't have to do any tying, can slip them on and off. I can relax. They're incredibly comfortable. This one right here, we got a little bit of a burgundy. Over here, a medium brown. It's going to work with almost anything in my wardrobe. Now with brogues. These actually are just amazingly comfortable, but what I also love about them is they do bring a bit of style. So, Anytime, if you know about dress shoes, these are going to be more casual because they've got the holes, they've got the perforations right here on the leather. Uh, but overall, I just love the look. I think that they do a great job for a relatively simple outfit. They can bring a lot of style to it. And so for that reason, I do put them in my interchangeable wardrobe when I'm traveling. Now, this next set of shoes are going to be my more formal shoes. And I think for most guys, simply going with a black pair of Oxfords is going to be one of the most interchangeable pieces of footwear you can have in a wardrobe, especially if you're more towards classic style. But like I said, I'm not really a black shoe guy, so I have a little bit more fun. In addition, I know how to push the envelope. So right here, I've got another pair of Oxfords, but I've got a bit of contrast right here in the leather, just a bit. It's not a high contrast, and that's how I'm able to get away and actually keep these relatively formal. I've got another pair right here. They really don't have much to them except for right here on the toe. They've got this medallion, basically a little bit of a broguing right here. It doesn't make them really that much casual and that solid overall look with a little bit of Oxford. It's just a great look. Now, let me show you how all of this fits into my bag. So, when I pack my carry-on, I'm normally trying to figure out exactly where to place the shoes. 
putting in the largest items first, I find is just going to make it easier um, simply to pack it. Boom, look at that, right in here. Looks like right now I'm just going to be able maybe to get uh, my sweatshirt. Could we get a pair of pants in this as well? Maybe, maybe one pair of pants. Maybe I can get them right here. Let's go ahead and try to close this up. We're able to get that done. Got another pair of pants I'm going to put in here. This right here, taking a sweater. All right, still have plenty of room, but we've got to get shirts in and I've got to get a couple jackets in. All right, so you'll see we still have a bit of room right here and I'll show you how I put my shirts in. All right, Jen, so one little hack I want to share with you is I put all my light colored shirts within my dark colored shirts here. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm wanting to make sure that I don't get any stains, uh, wrinkles I'm not too worried about. I'm going to actually take all of these shirts out as soon as I arrive at my destination and iron them and press my suits as well. But it's the collars uh, that I'm most concerned about. In addition, I don't want to get any of my white shirts dirty because I'm not going to be able to launder when I'm on the road. All right. All right. So let's see how this goes in. Oh, a little bit closer than I expected it to be, but still, boom, look at that. All right. There you go. 180 outfits in one carry-on, plus my workout gear. All right, gents, what did I miss? Let me know down in the comments and what video to watch next. How about the 20 wardrobe essentials that you need to know about in the year 2020. Yes, guys, we are here into the year 2020 and you want to check out this video because I go over the essentials that every man needs to know about. So go check it out.